So, you want to make a Risk of Rain 2 skin mod? Yeah, okay. So to start we want to have our model. I'm using a free model from Sketchfab here, I'll leave a link below, but for all intents and purposes, we'll call him Jeremy here. Now, Jeremy wants to be a Hondra skin, and for Jeremy to do that, we'll need a few things. First, we'll need Blender 2.9 or later, and Unity 2019.4.26, maybe. I've seen a few versions tossed around where it's like, oh, you need to use this version from 2018, or like this version from 2019. I use this version, and this version works best for me, I have had no problems with it, so if you want to follow along, well, 2019.4.26, that's the one. Oh, and of course, uh, you'll need risk screening too. Oh, and uh, also Acid Studio GUI. So we have our model, now we need our risk screen 2 assets. We're going to open up Asset Studio GUI for that one, and we're going to go here, we're going to click File, Load File. And we'll click through to our Risk Rain 2 directory, which will be under Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Risk Rain 2, Risk Rain 2 underscore data, streaming assets. Ah! And then standalone Windows 64. Now you're gonna see a few options when we look up Huntress, and you want the one that says base underscore huntress underscore bin assets all dot bundle. So none of the junk, none of the text files. So this is the one. We're going to take that and we're going to put it in. Boom. There we go. And before we export this, we need to edit our export options. So we're going to go to options, export options, and make sure that all nodes cast a bone is selected. That is very important. Very important. And then we do not go to export, but model. And we select export selected objects, in parentheses, split. Now this exports as an FBX, so we're going to go back into Blender and import FBX. And the folder we exported our Hondras file and slap that baby right in there. Now you're probably wondering, Audrey, honey. Where's my model? Nah, don't even worry about it. Linked in the description is a list of scripts. And with these scripts, we're gonna take the one we want for the survivor we want, in this case it's Huntress. And depending on if you're using Blender 3.0 or later or 2.9, it'll be a different script. Just use the corresponding category. We're gonna grab the one for Huntress and it'll be this Python file. We'll click up here to copy the raw scripts and we'll go into Blender and paste it right into the new script file. Now we're going to scale our model down and adjust the pose in pose mode so that we can best fit it to the armature. Don't parent it just yet. That comes later. Oh, and make sure to tick the uh, symmetry option as well on x-axis. You can use edit mode too, but I tend to do most of it in pose mode so I don't mess with the animations too much. I'm not sure if it's necessary, but call me paranoid. So, once we have our model, we can parent it with automatic weights and... Wait. Huh? No, why isn't this working? Okay, so normally when a bone heating issue happens like this, we can go to edit mode, press A to select all, and then M to merge by distance. That usually fixes what the hell. Okay, we're going to be learning about weight painting today, kids. Buckle up. So, weight painting isn't too hard. It basically just tells the mesh how to interact with the armature and to what degree. Red means it's dedicated to that bone, and every color below that means it's deformed less and less by that bone. Deep blue meaning not at all. If you're not going the automatic weights method, make sure to parent with empty groups, and delete any groups that may already be there beforehand to reduce clutter and confusion. Even if you use automatic weights though, it's good to check through all your vertex groups on the right hand side and make sure things are weighted properly. 85-90% to 90 of the time it works like a charm, but it's that 10-15% to 15 that always fucks you up. So check those weights, gamers. Lastly, make sure to check the joints and deforms, and adjust the weight paints accordingly. Oh, also, if you have more than one material, make sure to bake the textures down to one material. Normally this would be a diffuse and normal, but I tend to just use diffuse. 
I'll leave a link below the tutorial that explains texture baking better than I could really, and quicker too. Okay, we have our weighted and parented model, now what? Well, we need to open Unity. I've heard a lot of different versions tossed around that people say you have to use, but I've always used 2019.4.26 for this. I don't know if it's the only one to use, but it's the one that works for me. So before we do anything in Unity, we're going to need to install a package, and that's basically just a fancy word for an add-on. You'll go to this GitHub page, I'll link it below, and you'll grab this URL right down here. Slap that fancy boy in the package manager under git link and you have the tools you need to make your skin. Nice. Let's create some folders first though. We'll name this one Jeremy mod and this one resources. Next in the Jeremy mod folder, we'll make a skin info file and fill it with the important details. Stuff like mod name, author, that's you baby, version, and most importantly skins. Though we'll come back to this one. Right now we're going to set the size to one. Uh, this adds an element. And you're gonna slap that mod right in there once the time comes, but we'll just make it now for later use. So now it's time to make the skin definition file and fill this out. We're gonna put this inside the mod info file later. We'll leave mod dependency as is, unless of course you require another mod to run your mod. In this case, it's fine as defaults. Now for body name, we'll go to this handy dandy index that I have right here. I'll link it below, but this tells the script what survivor we're editing and what index values to use. So we're going to be using Huntress body, which is right here. Next for name token localizations, put the number of languages you want to add. For me, it's size 1 since we'll be putting English, and we'll put the name here. Now unlockable name, I'm not sure if it's necessary, but we'll fill it out just in case. I tend to do it just to be safe. Now base skins will set the size 1, and under element 0, where it says index, we'll leave that as 0. If it doesn't work, I found that setting 0 to 1 sometimes helps, but more often than not, 0 is fine. Next we'll go to mesh replacements. We want to replace the Huntress mesh with Jeremy and the Scarf mesh with a null property. So we're going to go back to our index. Under Huntress body we'll see that Scarf is 11 and body mesh is 10. These are the two things we'll be using. So we'll leave the base mesh for the Scarf on none and place the index as 11. This tells the script that we are replacing the Scarf mesh with an empty property. Next we'll replace the body mesh, but first we need to import our handy dandy blend file from before. We'll go back to our resources folder and import asset, drop it right in here under element that says index 10 for the body mesh, and we'll drag and drop our Jeremy mesh, boom, perfect. Now to add our texture, we need to create a new material first. And we'll click through shader, fake ROR, hopu games, deferred, and click standard. We'll call this one Jeremy material. And we need to import a new asset. And we'll plop in our unwrapped texture, and remember, one material per mesh. Now we'll take this texture and plop it into the base RGB of our material. And we'll take our normal down to about 0.5, but if you have a normal texture, feel free to put it here. I find if I keep it at 1, it often makes certain parts of the mesh transparent, and we don't want that, so I've just, by habit, put it down to 0.5. And as well, make sure to tick the box for screen space dithering. This will make the mesh transparent if the camera gets too close. It's mainly for a consistency thing with the rest of the game. Now going back to our skin definition, we'll scroll back down past our mesh replacements and go to render infos. We're only replacing one material, the body mesh, so we'll set the size to 1. Set the render reference index to 10, default shadow casting mod to on, and then drag and drop your material, not your texture, the material, into the element. Oh, and I almost forgot, under icon we can click create from colors and make a little palette for the skin to show up as in the character select. Neat. Now finally we'll add our skin definition file to the element under skins in our mod info file. 
We'll click this and select our definition. In this case, it's our only definition. And we'll cross our fingers and click build. I won't explain how to install your mod manually, but I will leave a link to someone who can explain it better and quicker than I ever could. And once you have that squared away though, uh, just drop it into your plugins folder and test it out. Let's see what we got. Oh, the truth, here's Jerma, right here. And we did it, yes! I'm actually very surprised that worked the first time. I'm very happy right now. So let's get in the game, let's check it out and see what happens. There's a few weight painting issues on the ass. <laughs> I can see a little uh, vertex kind of hanging off, but we can always go back and put one file, fix that, and it'll be easy. Yeah. There's a few weight painting issues, but other than that, we just got them on, baby. 